on Helen's YouTube channel as well. And uh, we're also very grateful to Linguascope for supporting these webinars, uh, which we very much appreciate. So if you didn't realize, TILT stands for Technology in Language Teaching Events. And the original idea was to have um, a face-to-face -face event in April this month at um, Helen's school. But um, unfortunately, that had to be cancelled. Um, I think I can hear something in the background. If someone's got their mic on, can you mute that, please? Um, so we decided to, instead, because we couldn't have the face-to-face -face event, we decided to have a, um, a series of webinars instead. So uh, there we are. Right, so we're about to start recording. Helen, are you happy to start recording now? And then we will do the introductions. Fantastic. So I can see that we are now recording right now. So welcome, everybody, to... Uh, the 2nd of April Tilt Thursday. We are absolutely delighted that you are here and more importantly we're, we're absolutely delighted that Sandra Actas from uh, Wellington College is here to talk all about Office 365. So welcome to Sandra. This is the session that we're going to be going through today and, oh, and I will stop sharing my screen right now and I'll be monitoring the chat but over to you Sandra. Welcome to uh, Tilt Thursday. Thank you ever so much for your time and sharing your expertise around Office 365. I'm sure there'll be many 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 questions so if you have a question and you'd like to uh, put it in the chat I will try my best to answer everyone's questions. So I'll turn my, my video off now and over to you Sandra. Okay uh, good evening everyone. Uh, please feel free to ask questions anytime I really don't mind and I will try my best to answer any question. Uh, feel free to interrupt and I, I, will, I will reply as much as I can. So I'm going to introduce myself first. Uh, my name is Sandra Akrash and I, I am the head of French at Wellington College. Uh, before joining Wellington, I was working in the state sector for about five years uh, in, a school, in a school called the Matthew Arnold School in Staines, near Windsor. And before that, I was a private tutor for about eight years and I was also studying part time for my second degree. Uh, I've got quite an unusual profile in the fact that I am a biologist first, and then I got a second degree in linguistic. Uh, I think it's given me quite a methodological approach to teaching, and you might actually see that tonight. Um, I also love technology, and I was really excited to, to start working for a Microsoft Showcase School this year at Wellington College. Uh, as soon as I realized that uh, Wellington was a, a Microsoft Show Showcase school. I decided to go paperless with my teaching, uh, which means that I have absolutely no book in my classes. Uh, the students are all equipped with um, mostly Surface Pro and they all have digital pen. Uh, and then I took on the challenge. And so far, it's been working very, very well. So I'm going to try to demonstrate that to you tonight. Um, the good thing about uh, being paperless is that actually for me, the transition to uh, online teaching was quite easy. Uh, it doesn't make that much difference, actually, apart from the, the, the fact that the students are actually now little screens on my computer. Uh, but I work more or less in the same way that I used to when I was teaching uh, live. Uh, tonight, I'm going to uh, speak about team first uh, for about 10 minutes. Uh, just an introduction to it and just to show you how to set up an appointment on team. Uh, and then I'm going to spend most of the time on OneNote, show you what I do with OneNote, how I teach, plan lesson, deliver them, give feedback, uh, record live feedback as well. And finally, uh, I will try to give you some of my best expertise on the week I've done with distance uh, teaching within team and try to answer any questions you might have. Um, do I have any questions so far? Or? Uh, no, I, not well. I think we might have a couple, but I think we can we can come to those um, in a moment. But I think uh, if we crack on, that'd be lovely. Thank you. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to do is try to show you our teamwork. So I'm going to have to share my screen with you um, and uh, put you. Let me check it's ready. Yeah. I am going to uh, show you uh, my Outlook calendar. So hopefully that will work fine. Right. There. Okay. Is that showing? Uh, yes, in a moment. It's, yeah, yeah, we can see that fine. So there is many ways that you can actually organize a team meeting. You can do it from the team application, different way. I'm just going to use the to show you the way I use because I think it's the easiest way. And if you use Outlook, that's going to be perfectly easy to use, and it's the most simplest way. So as you can see, this is a typical typical week for me. Uh, I put absolutely everything at Outlook. Um, I don't have a teacher planner, so anything going there. And again, if you have questions about that, I'm happy to answer. 
So to organize the team meeting, I basically pick a slot. So say, for example, I want to organize the team meeting. Can you see my mouse moving on my screen? Yes, we can. Okay, good. So if you, if for example, say I want to have a meeting right there, I just click on that, double click, open that. Uh, first thing I will do is click on team over there. So that should appear. Then I will give it a name. So for example, uh, team MFL meeting. Uh, then here, I'm not going to do that now, otherwise you will see all my colleagues and student email appearing, but you just type here the, the name of the student or the name of your colleague, and it will automatically appear here, and then it will send them an invite. You check the time, so I'm just checking there, so that is the time, so you could change it, make it an hour, for example. And then after that, you, you can write any note you want there. I just say at the moment you're showing us your timetable, but not we can't ah. actually see you creating this bit. So I think it's just okay. Let me show you the other that. window that you need. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, all right. So that would be more interesting. Can you see that now? Ah, oh, yes. Okay. Yeah, that's ah. great. So basically, what's happened is when I clicked on the meeting, it opened a sub window. You didn't see that. <laughs> so here we go. I am the window. So you, I added my own title. Then I clicked here. So when you click here, automatically that appears. Uh, in required there, you just write the name of the participant. Uh, I'm not going to do that now, otherwise their email is going to appear. But you can just do that there. Then check the time, date. Uh, let's meet about, I don't know, anything, planning. You can write any comment you want. And then you just click send, basically. You can also give them um, uh, an alarm that would just tell them that, give them a reminder that they have a meeting. You can write, uh, not, I mean, you can dictate note anything you want uh, i just keep it like that normally and then you send it so it's not going to send because i didn't put anyone on it but normally when you click send what will happen is that you will have automatically um they will receive an email to invite them and then it will go into my outlook calendar so i'm going to share that back with you and let's see if it works so here you go you've got it there so the meeting appear here they will receive an invite and all they have to do is accept it and when time come, you just right click on it like that and you just go join meeting. And then uh, you will be joined in the meeting and I will show you in a minute how it, that happened because I need to open the team meeting now because it won't open from there. Um, so pretty easy, pretty simple. You can invite a full class. So if your um, IT system allow you, can just write the class name and then all the students will be invited automatically. Uh, otherwise, you will have to invite them one by one. But depends on how your school system work. And the student will all receive invite when you do your class, um, your teaching from there. And they just have to click join. So it's quite, quite easy from there. So let me stop sharing my screen now. So just to clarify, Sandra, would all the children have surfaces and would all have their calendars? So you would send them an invite or they'd be able to see exactly when they have. Or is that, could you maybe talk a little bit about how you structure the day? As in, do you have the same number of lessons per day as you would um, face to face in, in the present context, or how how do you set that up, please? And could I, could I just interrupt a bit and ask if you could speak just a little bit closer, a bit louder as well? Okay. Is that all right? Yeah, I'm coming closer. That's good. Thank you very much. Uh, if uh, so, at the moment we are following the very same timetable as they would have in class uh, in school. I mean, uh, so do we expect them to to be online at the very same time as they would turn up into our classroom. Uh, so it's the teacher that need to invite them online for their team meeting and the students are just expected to join class after class. Uh, we are uh, big on Microsoft, so more or less everybody is using, using Outlook. So I use it as a teacher and then I would expect most of the students to be using Outlook actively now. So the fact that Outlook and team are working together, it's, uh, it's very practical because you just need to, to follow the Outlook calendar and they would have invite from their teacher, print on join and they would be going the quite easy from virtual classroom to virtual classroom right so are you sending them an email with a link for them to join at the start of yeah. each lesson or is that automatically in their outlook calendar automatically so as soon as i set up the team meeting they will receive an email to tell them they've been invited and they just click accept uh, and then join at the right time i see so, and uh, ramesh has asked the question are these lessons live generally or yeah do you have like the introduction and then it's more asynchronous where you give the students some um, a task to do and then you come back at the end of the lesson uh, I will, uh, on I will, the teams again i will speak about the lesson structure later but yes basically i teach no them problem. like more or less as i would in class okay 
Thank you. So, I mean, I do let it, I give them time to work independently for about five, 10 minutes at a time, depending on the year group, but I, I am actually on there so they can see me. And we, all, we have the question as well, do the students see the meeting time on their calendar? Is that is that how it's works? It's all synced together, is that right? Yeah, as you can see every, uh, so it's appear on their calendar just as you've seen it with mine. Yeah, just okay. The same title, same time, everything. And they can see also who has accepted it. Um, and I will try to show you now, so let me open team. Uh, I've invited uh, Ellen on team. Ellen, did you get my invite? I don't know if you can, can you hear me? Uh, is this the one from the previous, from earlier on in the day? Uh, no, or is I this a new one? Send you a new one. And have you done it to my um, my school address or to uh, my same address normally? Uh, yeah, same address. Same address. And did you send it at two minutes past four? Yes, I think so. Good. Okay. Right. Okay. So, Ooh, how exciting! Right. So I'm now going to so I'm click going on there. To... Yeah. And then I'm saying I will join. And. So I'm trying to share my screen now. Reminder. Here's our meeting. Join the Teams meeting. Yeah. This is very stressful. While Helen's doing that. Um, I think, I'm, I'm, I think oh, I'm coming in. Okay. Okay. While Helen's doing that, um, uh, Elizabeth has asked a question. I use the calendar with all the classes, but the students only see the information that is for them. Is that right, Sandra? What do you mean the information for them? So they all have their own timetables. You have your timetable. So presumably they will only see. Oh, yeah, they don't the... see my calendar. Um, yeah. Unless I make it public, which I do. Um, everybody can see my calendar. They just can't see what I'm doing. They just can see I'm busy, basically. OK. And uh, we've got another another great question about do these students, in when they join the school, do they get a rigorous uh, set of training around how to use Microsoft Teams and how long does it take them to get up and running with, with using Microsoft uh, Teams? So the staff got training. We we had an hour training and I don't think the students have. They're just really good. They just click join and then... Okay, <laughs> that's it. They don't need training. <laughs> we, we were the one. <laughs> because basically they receive a, a, an invite and all they have to do is click join. And, and then I'm showing you my screen now. Can you see my team screen? Yes. So that's when you click uh, join, that's what's up here. And then you just go click join now. It's very similar to Zoom as well. So I'm going to join now. Um, so it's going to be on Zoom and Team at the same time. Uh, so when I get some feedbacks, we'll try. So I'm not going to turn on my camera here or my microphone. So I'm going to mute myself. Can you still hear me? Yes, absolutely fine. OK, because if I don't, you will have a feedback. Uh, but basically, uh, Team look like that. So it's very, very similar to Zoom. I don't use all the functionality of it. I'm using the very basic functionality. So basically, I click here. And with my school, we have to record every uh, lesson we do. So to record, I'll show you again, you click on the three little dot there, and you start recording. So I'm going to do it now. Uh, then when you, it's automatic. You, you just get, get recorded. You don't need to press stop record. You just stop recording as soon as you finish the session. Uh, and then you receive yes. an email to tell you that your session uh, is ready for you to download if you need that. Uh, usually, I do take it and I put it back on their OneNote so they can watch that later if anybody missed the lesson. Uh, so we've got the question, um, how many people can join the meeting in, in real time at the same time? Is there a limit? Uh, I have no idea how many maximum, but I had no problem with any of my class, and I've got one of about 29. So I guess it's uh -huh. more than that. Um, OK, I don't thank have... you. Uh, Oh, well, Ka Catherine no has asked, why do you have to record every lesson? Is that just a safeguarding thing? Uh, or? It has to do with safeguarding in my school, yeah. So, okay. uh, so every lesson we do uh, has got to be recorded. Uh, so what we, we do, so the first thing I do is uh, tell the student they are being recorded, which is absolutely fantastic for behavior management online. So I do recommend that uh, because there is no problem, because they know they are being recorded. <laughs> Uh, then what I do is uh, here you've got the chat so you can click and if you will see it's very similar to Zoom. You would have the chat on the right side here. Participant is the little people there. So when I click on that, so what would appear if you had a full classroom, you would have list of students that have joined and then list of students that 
have been invited but are not on the uh, on the stream yet so it's your register done for you basically um you don't need to do a register because anybody not on there you know you didn't come so that's very useful uh and yeah so elaine is writing hello that's fantastic. Uh, um ramesh has asked a really good question are you allowed to do mock speaking one-to-one -one or with another teacher present in noah uh, teams no something we can do that we just record obviously now it's not really called mock, mock speaking but um Sure. I, I, I do have one-to-one -one tutoring as well, and we, we do it on team and we just record it. Um, That's so. fantastic. And someone else in the chat earlier said they had 130 people in teams at the same time for an assembly. So you can you can certainly have um, up to 130. I don't know uh, if anyone can find out what the maximum is and put it in the chat. That'd be much appreciated. So this is all, yeah, some, some yeah. teachers are teaching two, three classes at the same time. So okay. if the teacher is absent, I could ask more people to join my class, for example. It would be good. Fantastic. Uh, Thank you. So that's it for team and uh, that's more or less all I use because once I put it on, so what I do is I've got two screens. Uh, one I use to be on one note and the other one I display team on the side so I can still keep a, an eye on the chat and what's going on in there. Um, I've got some clear rule with my students. So they cannot speak to each other on the chat. They just can ask me direct question or question to about the lesson. Uh, and also they can reply to any question I ask. Um, they're all very, very good. So, so far, no problem. You can, when you create a meeting, there is an option to mute everybody just as on Zoom. But so far, I ask them to mute themselves. And so it gives them the liberty to unmute and ask me a question live if they want to. Or I can ask them targeted questions. So I would just ask the question, give a name, and then they would just reply. It's coming about, take them about two seconds to coming live that's fantastic and the icon in the middle there that's the share the screen option uh, do you do one, that yeah, at all i can show you and see uh, how it works so i'm sharing two screens at the same time one on zoom and on teams so okay we've done that before it was working so you can see the window on the if i think so you can see here what i would do is just uh, pick any window and just as i'm doing now i could share my screen uh one thing that i can't show you now is you can also take control of uh, somebody else's computer. So that's quite interesting. So uh, you ask permission to take control of their screen and then you can uh, overtake their uh, document. So it could be a Word document, a OneNote document, anything. And you can just, uh, just for this application, just take over. I haven't done it yet with my class because I have OneNote so I can write directly on their document. But if people don't want to use OneNote and they still want to use Teams, that could be something they could do. Do you have any other question on Teams? Or? Yes, absolutely. So um, we've got a few questions. One is um, students say they cannot hear the videos when I share the screen. Any suggestions, Sandra? Uh, that's a problem we've been having with uh, with Team as well. Uh, at the moment, all I'm doing is give them the link and I give them about a uh, few minutes, five, ten minutes to go and watch the video on their own and come back. Uh, but we're trying with my school as well to, to find a way that we can all watch or listen together. It's the same for most recording as well. Okay, um, that's great. Um, we uh, uh, it's been mentioned in the chat that the maximum seems to be two hundred and fifty for a, a Microsoft Teams session, which is uh, wonderful. Um, I think Ms. Elizabeth wanted just to clarify about the calendar. Um, so they're they're seeing their own calendar. You're seeing your calendar, but then you're sending them the link to, for them to join the Teams via email. Is that right? No, no, I don't send them anything. Uh, as soon as I create the, the meeting and I put their name into required, they will receive an email automatically. So I don't have any additional. I things. see. Right. And then, that's, yeah. So then their calendar is updated with the, the so details. They, they will receive a, an email automatically from Outlook to tell them they've have, they have been invited to a meeting. And as soon as they accept it, appear on their own calendar. OK, that's fantastic. Hopefully that's clear with everyone how the calendar works. That's wonderful. I'm just checking uh, if there are any other questions, but you're doing a great job. It's great. So if um, I show you my calendar again, if I didn't close it, I think I might have closed it. So. Okay, so we've got a great question from Cheryl about back channels, about the chat. You <laughs> get to monitor everything. Is it possible, presumably, you, is it possible for the students to chat privately with each other where you're not included within the message string? Uh, no, I don't think so. Okay. Uh, I, I, I'm not aware of that, at least. Uh, okay. They might communicate with each other, but I think that would be more on their mobile phone on WhatsApp. <laughs> But not done anything, and I don't let them use the the chat to do that. Um, but I think it's all about 
using routine as well as you would do in class and make it clear what you expect from them. Of course. Um, in the, in um, the... With a number of thumbnails on the screen, um, is the maximum mm -hmm. four or can you have more than that? Uh, what do you mean the little... Um... You know when everyone appears with their little thumbnails for Zoom, for example, uh, mm -hmm. is the maximum four? That, that, this no, is the question. I, I think I've seen more than that. I don't, I tend, I tend to ask them to, to put their video in the beginning or put them when they speak, but normally they turn the video off. Um, okay. So I haven't tried to put all my class at one go. Um, just because, just again, for behavior management, um, the way I do it is I just ask them question and they reply immediately to make sure they're listening. Um, but I don't expect them to be showing their face all the time. No, no, of course, of course. I show mine. So, <laughs> so and with you, when you're sharing the screen, you could, for example, have a Quizlet Live running or um, yeah. or a Kahoot running. That's that, so because I was seeing on Twitter that people were talking about um, sending um, people the code for whichever session it might be. But actually, if you're sharing your screen, you don't need to do that. They can just see what the yeah. code is there and, and then. Play anything you want, you can. The one thing I would say uh, to be careful with uh, sharing your screen is the same with Zoom or actually with with Team is uh, not to display your desk, desktop because otherwise they would see email popping up. Uh, okay. Make sure you display window, you share window, so you share particular app or web page, uh, and not your desktop because I've done it by mistake. It's not very good. Um, it was during a staff meeting, so not very important. <laughs> if you share your desktop, they will see everything. Okay. We got some other nice questions about muting and unmuting. Is it possible to do that as the teacher? Can the teacher mute everyone in one so, go? Yes, you, what you can do is as default mode, you can mute everybody from start and they can't really unmute themselves until you do it one by one. Uh, so for challenging classes, or if you've got a very large number of people, you might want to do that. Uh, I, I don't do that. I give them freedom to mute themselves. Uh, again, I make it very clear and they're very good. Okay. And is it possible for the students to record the sessions that you do, or is that only down to the teacher? Uh, that I don't know. I think they might be able to, uh, but to be honest, for me, they don't need to because I give them access to the recording after anyway. So. Okay. Okay. So you're not you're not sure if it, if it if you could forbid them from I making think recordings. They, they see that they have been recorded, so I don't think it will let them record on top of another recording. So it's okay. Really, and they have access to their recording if they've been recorded anyway. Um, Kerry's asked the question. Sorry, I, I hope you don't mind me asking all these questions. So Kerry's asked the question: Is it possible for the students to mute the teacher? Because I know that was an issue uh, yes. around Google Meet. Yeah. So that's a problem. So you can you can uh, stop them doing that at the very beginning. So that would be for a challenging class, I guess. Uh, if that happens once, then you take full control at the beginning of the meeting and you you put themselves as uh, mute everybody and you're the only presenter and and that that they won't be able to do that anymore. Um, so far, I had no problem with my class doing that to me. But again, I think it's if you have a student that's particularly challenging, you might want to do that. But sure. yes, you can mute them all. So if you wanted to mute the students, can you just yeah. show, well, obviously we don't need to show the names of the students, but can you just explain what you would have to do? Is it a keyboard shortcut so or is it a... The is beginning, a... So I will have to put you back on my, uh, on my calendar. So can you see my calendar now? Uh, so... In a moment, your screen share. Yeah, yeah, we can see your calendar now, yeah. I'm going to double click on the meeting here. So it's a team meeting. So when you click on team meeting, OK, you've got like a join team meeting, and then you've got meeting options. So for some reason, it doesn't want to go now. Nope. It go now. Right, so we're seeing your calendar, but we're not seeing the options. Yeah, uh, well, anyway, you can, when you click on meeting option there, it will give you the option to be the only host and to mute everybody else. And then you do that. I think it's because it's a past meeting, so I can't do that. But you click there, and it will be written, do you want to mute everybody and be the only presenter? So then you can do it from there. OK. Um, Cheryl's asked a question. As a teacher, can you see if students have muted you? Or is it just a question that you can see that you can't be heard? Uh, I've been told that you can't see uh, who has muted you. Really? So, yeah. Okay. It hasn't happened to me yet. Uh, okay. But I've been told if they mute you, you can't tell who it is. So the first time it's happened you just don't you just uh, take full control of the class i guess okay move. that's great yeah so ramesh again has asked the question are you allowed to deliver live lessons in your schools we're not currently allowed to do so and no plans yeah. to change that but you, you said already that in your particular situation you are doing live lessons i am teaching as i would normally do during my normal yeah. table so i'm having all live lessons the only difference is i record them um, but apart from that i'm teaching normal hours 
That's fantastic. Okay, wonderful. We, we've been, yeah, we've answered lots and lots of questions. I think um, we should let Sandra carry on. Otherwise, it's great that you've got these questions, but I think we want, don't want to interrupt um, Sandra I think too much. We will have a lot of questions on OneNote as well. Okay. Mm. Yeah. So, Tim, basically, the idea for me, just using, the, I could use Zoom as well. I mean, the, the one thing with Tim is that it's linked with Outlook, so it's uh, seamless with uh, organization, and um, I like to be organized, so that's very good. And the students, so far, uh, I had uh, four or five classes last last week, and I had uh, nobody absent, so 100% attendance online, so that was quite amazing. Uh, that shows prove you how easy it is for them to use. As I say, I use two screens because I find dividing the screen in two, uh, it's not very useful, especially when I use OneNote. So on one of my screen, I project team, and on the other one, I just skip to the OneNote. So we're going to OneNote now, so I'm going to uh, share my screen with you. Uh, so let me find OneNote. Um, Sarah's asked whether you can you could explain, not necessarily show, but explain how you can take control of the other uh, learners' um, devices or the, the screens, I mean. So That's I am okay. not an expert on that. I've just do it during training. Um, okay. I can't remember. It's on the little three dot. You just, there's a button where you click uh, request control and then the person on the other side will have to accept it and then you can basically use their screen as your own. I've done it once and it was quite easy. That's that's great. That's great. I can see in the chat there's some real experts as well around using um, Microsoft tools. Microsoft. And, uh, so that's really <laughs> wonderful. So thank you ever so much for uh, for um, answering some of the questions of other people in the chat. Obviously, that we don't want to be interrupting Sandra too much. So um, now we're going to have a look at OneNote. Thank you so much. As I say, uh, Tim, I'm not an expert. I've really used the basic function, which I just to show people that you can actually uh, use it very just to, to basically teach show your face and show your screen. Uh, I don't do anything fancy on team. I just use it to to deliver my lesson. Where I do something much more advanced is probably on OneNote. So this is where we're going now. So let me speak about OneNote and the reason why I love it so much. Uh, I'm a big fan. I don't have share in Microsoft, but you might think I have because I really, really love it. <laughs> um, so the, the few bits, I've got 10 reasons why I like it. The first one is uh, it's save me time on planning. And when I mean save me time, it saved me uh, a lot of time on planning. I used to spend ages and ages preparing my lesson uh, on uh, smart node. No, not smart node, what's it called? Smart board. Uh, I did love it, but it was uh, time consuming. Uh, maybe my lesson looked better in a way. I don't know, like the, the look of them, but the content I think is much better now. Um, and it's, it's much faster to plan, I will show you that. I plan and deliver on OneNote, which means I don't have PowerPoint that go with it. I don't have any other document. It's all on OneNote, nothing else. Uh, this is what I display on the board, and this is what I choose to plan, deliver everything. So there is no doubling on activity. Um, and uh, everything on OneNote is in one space. That means I can put recording, uh, Word document, link, video, anything on one place. So it's extremely easy for the student to use. Um, don't need to carry books ever again. So I've got access to all my student books, which are digital books at any time. So that's been life changing, which means I can mark in my own time as fast or as slow as I want. Uh, and they know that uh, their work is scrutinized at all times. So they are actually working harder for me, I think. Um, it's good for live marking as well. So I can sit at my desk and just look at their, at their work without going around the class, which I tend not to because I've got a uh, I'm still a state school teacher at art, and I just tend to go around the class and check they're all working, but I could actually do that from my desk and check their work. Um, it's absolutely fantastic for differentiation, and I can show you that in a minute what I do. Uh, I'm still trying to create a different way to differentiate, so if anybody wants to share ideas, I'm taking. Um, we do collaborative work, so all the students can work on one document, and I will show you that as well. When the students are not in class because they are ill or any reason, this is fantastic because I don't have anything to prepare for them. All they have to do is catch up with the lesson that is now online for them. Um, and just I need to make sure they do it. But basically, I don't have to actually deal with sending cover work or anything. Same thing for cover, by the way. I just set a one-note lesson that is more like um, independent work, and they do it on there. I don't need to print anything or do anything. I never do printing anymore, ever. That's been uh, saving about half an hour of my day every day. Um, fantastic. 
So just uh, to clarify, we're looking at OneNote now, but we're also looking at Class Notebook. Is that the same thing, or yeah. is Class Notebook just the extension of OneNote so you get yeah, to see so, all the students' work? So OneNote is uh, is exactly the same thing. The Class Note is just where you basically add students to your OneNote, uh, and it gives you a bit more functionality where you can share with them, uh, right. give them feedback. Can I make a suggestion? Because this really confused me ever so much mm -hmm. until I was told this, that you've got there at the top one note. You've mm -hmm. at the moment got a mauve, you know, you've underlined class notebook. And it's that that has brought you this ribbon, which helps you manage. So perhaps if you clicked away from class notebook, just to see what it looks like if you didn't have class notebook. Oh, it's the same thing. And this then just... it just looks like a normal editing thing, doesn't it? But it's when you want yes, to manage the book. The so yeah. perhaps that might help because I got really confused about the difference between OneNote and Class Notebook. <laughs> so so uh, you can have your own OneNote and it works exactly the same way as this. The Class Notebook just allow you to to uh, deal with students, distribute lesson, edit them. I will show you that in a minute as well. Um, basically, Class Note is just an addition to OneNote where it allows you to add students. So here you've got like, for example, student one, student two. Uh, I couldn't put more because I have to use actual real people. And they have to be in my school, so that is my son, and that's one of my colleagues. Um, but in a real class, which I can't show you because it would be my student name, you will have about 20, 25 students here appearing. So the way it works, um, you've got a collaboration space where on there, and I will show you more in detail later on, you've got students that can work on a document all at the same time. Actually, let me show you that now. Actually, Sadja, before we go into that, can I just mm -hmm. ask a few more questions? Is that okay? So, mm -hmm. for example, we, we have um, one. How do you see pupils' answers if they're using the chat on Teams at the same time as sharing your screen? I use two screens. Right. So you split your screen into two. Is that right? No, no, no. I have two screens. So I've got uh, an extension screen. Oh, I see. So you literally have two monitors, and yeah. that's how you can. Right. Okay. But if you if you only had the one monitor, uh, would you I've be able to? Yeah, you can divide your screen in two, so you can just make the window smaller. Um, okay. But then you make win what not very small, and uh, because I write with a digital pen, it's quite difficult to do that. So I do love having two screens. Okay, way. fantastic. And then Ramesh has asked, can you use this to present on the whiteboard, or do students need to access this on their own devices? I project that on the whiteboard, and the students also use it on their own device, but they have their own version of it, so they can alter the document. So basically, I make a lesson. Uh, I display a task by task on the board, and the student will have their own version, uh, and they can edit it and it's saved into their own file. So I've got the original version displayed on the board. Fantastic, That's thank you. So the one cool thing you can do with OneNote is work on a collaborative document. So that means all the students will have access to that. So what I've done here, if I show you the full screen, can you see that? Uh, mm -hmm. So that's quite fancy. So I've created, uh, I use Excel to do that, uh, little um, pages for each student. Because what's happened is they, if they all work on the same page, uh, you get conflict and their work don't appear. But there, they are only allowed to work on their own page. And that's my template. So every time we do a task, they, they do that for themselves. So I will show you what's happened now. Does that come up? So you've created this template, or this is available from a bank no, of templates? I've made, made it myself. OK. So uh, here you go. So the background is not coming. It will come in a minute. Here we go. So then the student can write on their own page. And they, they make it bigger. So to write, they make it big, 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 like that. With their digital pen, they write. They could type as well. If you don't have, obviously, digital pen, they could type. Uh, I love the pen. Um, and then uh, as a teacher, you can see that appearing live on your screen. It's quite cool. So that's the first one I use. And I've got another one, so a bit more sophisticated. Uh, I made a map of Wellington. So that's my school. And I created little page for each place of the, of the school. And the, so that's the template. And when the student go on it, OK, there's a bit of delay. What you have here is going to appear in a minute. Taking time. Here you go. So you will have the student work uh, appearing. There you go. So they will put it big like that. They will write their own comments. And then I put it small again. And you can see the full map has been illustrated. So again, that takes a bit of time. This is where you can have fun and prepare things like that. 
So they all working at the same time on the same document. Uh, they can all see that being edited and it doesn't produce any conflict because they all work in their own space, basically. That's fantastic. We've got a few more questions. So um, we've been asked, how can they type? Can you show how they would do this, please? So presumably you would put sure. an, um, an activity in the collaborative space and then they can all then write in yeah. there. And then also, how, how do you create the template for collaborative writing, which is a similar question, isn't it? Uh, the template that took me a long time. <laughs> uh, uh -huh. It depends how creative you. Can you see my screen is flickering? I think it's uh, ah, it's yes. Back. So I will try to do that now. So uh, the template, it's a picture that was picture of Wellington, and I pasted picture on top of picture, uh, put it as background screen. You can do that in Paint. Uh, you can keep it as simple or as more complicated as you want. Really, you don't have to make it as complicated as me. So if I put the screen big like that, can you see that? Mm -hmm. So, so does it matter? Does it matter the size of the document? You can you can have it very large. Is that why yeah. you just zoom in? Exactly. Yes. Yeah. So I okay. this page there, I'm making it very big now, so I can just write nicely. So sorry if you can't see me because I will be writing now. So if I write like that, can you see that appearing? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I can use my digital pen. So that would be the pen version, and I'm going to try to type for you. So you can see that it doesn't have to be a pen. So I think it's on the frozen now. Uh, it doesn't like zoom at the same time as uh, windows. <laughs> okay, full screen. Here we go. So uh, you can also type. I think it's frozen. Okay. No, it's okay. It's fine. I can hear you fine. I presume everyone else can hear you. Everyone fine. Yeah, just my screen is. I don't know what you can see. Okay. I can't. Uh, it's taking time. So basically, you can either type. Okay, uh, one not went, so I guess uh, I'll have to open it again. So let's go back. It's fine, you're doing fine. So, so <laughs> presumably, because it's in the collaborative space, any of the students can collaborate at any point of the document, is that right? Uh, yes, when in the collaborative space, they can edit that at any time. Um, uh, are you, have you got it back now or not? Not yet. If you click share screen. I'll do that again. Share screen, and I need to share that. Here we go. Are you back? Yeah, that's lovely. Okay, so let me try to type so you can see me typing. I'm sure that it works. So if I write bonjour, there we go. And I can move that wherever I want. It doesn't have to be there. And write anything you want. So you can type or write at the size you want, and it's absolutely no problem. I do prefer for the student to write with the pen and uh, to type in English. Uh, but apart from that, I think that's personal choice. Um, mm -hmm. If anybody uh, working on Surface and they want to know as well how to add accent uh, when they're typing, I can tell you that as well. It's quite easy. That's great. Uh, yeah, we've got a few more questions. So can, every, can, can people edit each other's work in the collaborative space if they're typing? They can. Uh, I don't let them do that. I just tell them to write on their own space. Yeah. Otherwise, yeah. it creates conflict and the document will be taking the last version of it. Uh, this is why I've just basically done little square there. So if you let them write anywhere, they could erase everybody's work. When I experimented, I realized quickly that they needed their own space on there. That's why they have their own. Basically. Okay. Um, and Alexandra's asked, do, do you have a normal PC? I'm not sure exactly sure what that means. So presumably it's just like a standard PC running Windows 10. And No, to be able to write with the pen, you need an inkable device. So I've got a Surface Pro. Right. So, okay. So in okay, class, so this kind of yeah, yeah, that's right. So you were talking about the two monitors. Yeah. So that's your PC, but you're actually writing on your surface. Is that right? Yes. Right. Okay. So to do the inking. No, the, the monitor is not my PC. It's just a, an, just a monitor that I plugged in my surface and I just extend the screen. As you would I see. With the yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah. And I that's use a pen. So this is a digital pen. So just write on it. Uh, if I show you uh, the rest of one note, so you've got a content library. So the content library, this is something all the students can have access to. They can't uh, delete anything from there, it's just a teacher, but they can grab lesson. So for example, I will store all my lesson on the content library uh, and the student could uh, right click, copy and paste them in their own folder. I can put past paper question. I didn't there because it's a demo class. And I can put booklets as well. I've got a lot of booklets for them to practice. Uh, and it's on there as well if they want to have access to that. On the teacher-only uh, part, 
the students don't have access to that, they can't see it, they don't even know it exists. Uh, I put my lesson and I put the lesson that I am preparing as well. So they can't have access to that. So for example, this one there, I just wanted to show you what I've done there. So I started to plan for it. And if we have time, I can show you how to plan live as well. Um, and they don't have access to that. They will only have access to that when I just for example, show you copy and put it back on there. Now they have access to it. If that makes sense. Mm -hmm. uh, again, for their exam, I don't share the exam before they've done it, obviously. Uh, I share that with other teachers in my department so they can have the exam on Word. Then they can actually print it as a physical copy. And then they have the recording to play for the students. So it's all up here on one page, which is easy like that. And then uh, the most exciting bit is the student part. So the student, you can organize their folder as much as you want, as little as you want. You can let them do what they want with it. I impose the title with them because it makes it easier to uh, distribute lesson. So they all know, normally they have a term one, term two. Uh, I have a booklet for them, homework space, their own space where they can put anything they want. And then when we do oral station, it goes there. So again, they would have their own session. And if you see, I just give you a random example there. So they could do prep. And I would tick there that it's done, mark it. So the red pen is my pen. Uh, they are not allowed to use the red pen. You see. And uh, when, they're, when they're inking on the screen, does it mm -hmm. have to be a certain format, like a PDF, or can they ink over anything that you put into the space? Oh, they just write directly on the screen with their Surface Pen. Yeah, but does the, the format of what they're writing on, does it have to be, say, a PDF, or could, be, could they ink no, on a Word document, for example? No, no, it's not even a Word document. They just saw, if I show you now, I can straight away. But this is just the one note. I can just write on it straight away. Right, OK. So it's basically just the canvas within OneNote. But if you were to yeah. add a file into a OneNote page, for example, a PDF or a... So I will show you could... now. Yeah. Uh, so different teachers work differently. So I, myself, I'll show you first my version, because probably uh, the easiest way I create my lesson directly on OneNote. So I type in OneNote. I use it as a Word document if you want. Uh, so everything there has been created on OneNote. So you would have text that would be typed. There is differentiation. So the differentiation I show quickly. So the student can basically use the rubber to uncover the work there, the word there. Uh, then you have video integrated. Uh, and then you have back-to-back -back dictation. You can speak about it later, extension, everything. So that's my style. And then we've got Angeline, which is live today. Uh, she prefers to plan on Word document. So here we go, it's how it looks for her. So she created Word document. As you can see, it's a link there. And uh, she makes beautiful lessons on words, and then she prints them on OneNote, which means basically uh, I cannot alter the document. You see, if I try, I can't touch it. Where I compare to my one, I can literally change anything I want there. You see? So if it's a one note, it's printed straight on one. Uh, so if it's a word, it's printed on one note as if it's printed. If you plan on one note directly, you can do it any time. So the, the reason she did that is because first she wasn't convinced with one note, so she was printing her lesson. Um, but we can ask her later. She's live now. <laughs> um, but as you can see, she made beautiful lessons. Uh, the students don't mind uh, whether if it's straight on one note or if it's on what. I personally find that it saves a lot of time to do everything on OneNote. It's much easier and there's no fiddling with different apps. It just goes straight on. So that's great. We've got, a, we've got a few more questions, if that's OK. Um, is, it the, possible to, is it possible to lock the document once you have enough answers in the collaborative space? Uh, I haven't tried to lock on collaborative space, but yes, I think it is possible. Okay. Uh, I don't lock anything myself. Um, but again, I think it's more in case the student are being naughty. Yes, you can. I, I know that you can lock documents everywhere on OneNote. I haven't done it. OK. OK. Esther's asked the question, can anyone who uses class notebooks share ideas on how they have organized the student subfolder? So essentially, that I mean, what you've got there, that sort of file structure, that, mm -hmm. um, uh, yeah, I, th I think that's fine. I think people can see how you structured that. It would be lovely yeah, if people wanted to. That's a personal choice. Uh, of I course. have not seen anybody else doing it. Um, because I just started, I haven't seen it. So that's my take on it. OK. Uh, Great question um, from David. Can you push a document or a task to students individual areas for the whole class in one action? Yes. So I will show you how to do that now. 
So if you are on, for example, if I take this lesson that is not finished, but I want to distribute it uh, quickly, I go to class one not here, and I go distribute page. I click distribute page, and what you will have here is, it takes a bit of time. So I want to put it in term two. So they all have to have a folder called term two. This is why I'm quite strict with them not changing the name of their folder. Uh, and then I click distribute. Now it will do it. Uh, the only problem it can take up to two to three minutes and depending on the, how good oh, it's done now because I've got only two students, but sometimes it takes a bit longer. So I used to do that. Um, it works better if you do it two hours before, even the day before. But the problem is I've got some students that are really keen and they would do the lesson before the lesson, if you see what I mean. So <laughs> I don't want that to happen. So what I do now is I put it the last minute into content library and they go and cut and paste it themselves. Uh, I just find it easier. But you That's can just fantastic. Thank you. If you can see now, so you see it doesn't appear yet in a folder. You can uh, go on the class, right click, sync the folder, and when you sync it, you see it appear now. So there you go, it's been done. Uh, but basically is that, so in uh, in their own folder, they will have their own version. So if I can show you some example of lesson that we've done, anything you would do on an actual book, like, a, I mean, not a digital one, I have managed to reproduce on one note. So, so far, the most challenging one was back-to-back -back dictation, if you know what is that. Um, because you require to print quite a lot of paper, but I have found a way. So, so far, everything I managed to do it on one note, including mm -hmm. student feedback, AFL, differentiation. So that's my take on it. So you can see for the help, for example, where in the, so that is a DC language. So the video is live there. And the, the help, for example, all they have to do is take their rubber and just erase that so they could have the transcript. So there's differentiation for you. Uh, they have the grammar there, gap fill, speaking skill, and then I will show you how they can record as well. I think a lot of people were asking for that. Uh, now for the recording, I will go in there. So that is Angeline that created that. Um, so what she's done there, so this is for the IGCSE, see if anybody does the IGCSE. Uh, the student have to work on pictures, so they can alter the document, put their own picture there, not the one they will use for the actual exam, the practice picture. And then there they have the mark scheme, so the teacher can just literally, as they're doing it, give them a score like that, uh, and carry on, give them a score. Now, what we can do as we can't actually do all the session live, you can go back there, click here, and I will show you insert. Yeah. And if you click audio, you can record live on the document. So if I go one, two, three, recording, then I stop. And my recording is right there already. But when I put it up, 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 there we go. So can I try to play it? And then you can see if you can all listen to that. Let's go. So if I go one, two, three, recording, there you go. Did you hear that? Yes. Lovely. So this is how you do recording. And then you can write, for example, anything. So student. And then the teacher can do their own back later on and just add their comments. So that's how you can do recording. Um, so yes, basically, uh, in terms of organization, the, the one thing I would say is just to make sure that uh, the students, so if I show you both students here, they have more or less the same folder name. So they can move them, but they cannot change the name because if they change the name, then it's harder for the student or the teacher to, to, to mark the work. You can also have a homework page where you can put all the homework if you want to. There's space where they can put their own work. Uh, again, I can't show you a real class because the name of uh, this is a real student work there. Uh, do we have any questions? Uh, yep, we've got a few more questions. So um, Rachel asked the question, do all the students work at their own pace then in what you're showing us? No, they don't work at their own pace because uh, I do deliver it as a normal lesson. Okay. So the only way I see it, I had a kind of very old approach to the whole thing, which is uh, I wanted to reproduce traditional teaching as much as possible. 
So the one note is literally the print I would give them if I was teaching live. Uh, so I would tell them, uh, I don't know, say I'm teaching Elan now, and you would be on this lesson, say mine. Oh, say we do doing the reading. So we've done the starter together, and I would say now I give you five minutes on your own to do the reading task. You've got help on the side if you need it. You just uncover it. You've got question in English, so answer in English, and uh, I give you five minutes. If you have any question, you can just uh, write your question in the chat box and I will uh, answer you live. And I just yeah. give them five minutes to do it and then we connect together. Well, that's fantastic. Um, Ramesh asked the question, is there a way of using the clicker to move through the content as you would in PowerPoint? Uh, no, so I just, uh, so if I show you our display in the screen, so on the screen it wouldn't look like that. So when I do it on the whiteboard, I click on this arrow right there and I basically can make the screen as big or as small as I want. So say I'm doing the starter, but that was not a great one. So say I want to do that, but I don't want to show them the question. I would click on that thing here, and then I would push everything down. So it would quite look quite nice on the board like that. So that would be display on my whiteboard. I see. And, and can you display a timer so the students can see exactly how long each activity lasts? Uh, I'm sure you can. I haven't done it, but okay. I'm, I'm sure you can. You can display anything you want. So you can put video timer. I'm sure it's fine. Um, but yes, I can see why. Um, I haven't done it, but yes. So here you have video. So for example, if I play the video, um, you will see it doesn't open the link. It will just play it straight. Oh, it doesn't work because it's an old lesson. That's YouTube for you. Um, I've done one. So I've done this one this morning. So that's what will be working. Ça sert. Ça veut dire quoi? So the video is played directly from the one note, so it doesn't open a new page. It's quite nice. So they could ask still the question which I haven't made yet, uh, appearing right on their leaf. Quite nice. And if and I to, want to display it myself, I just put it big. Sorry, and to add the YouTube clip, you just need the link, don't you? Not the embed code. Is that right? And it recognizes so, it as a YouTube clip. So for example, you won't see me taking that, but if I take a, a YouTube video, so I'm going to take a link anything. Taking time. So basically, I just copy the link. Well, it doesn't work, no, but I, okay, they may work, but one, taking time. I just copy the link from the from YouTube, paste it on one note, and that appears by magic. Excellent. Um, so all I've done there, I haven't created anything. I just literally place the link. Uh, I just put insert, put the link, and then that appeared. Fantastic. Um, uh, it, the question we have the question: Can you freeze the screen if you want to? Is that possible? Uh, I freeze my screen on my whiteboard, but that's nothing to do with OneNote. It's just uh, my whiteboard. So in class, okay. we freeze the screen. Okay. Yeah. We, I suppose on in the same level, could you um, lock the students' surfaces at the same time? Uh, so if no. you were like, no, you can't do that. So I can't. I don't have control on their surface. However, what I can do is I can see what they're doing. So Say I'm having a live lesson and I'm teaching Angeline and she's doing this lesson, I could see her work appearing live. So while they're working for five minutes, I can go and make sure they're on task. Okay, so you mean like literally walking around the classroom as opposed to having a having on your on your screen, you you wouldn't be able to see thumbnails of all their screens, no? No, uh, no, unless they're working on collaborative document, I would have to go. Yeah, sure. Unless you do, there's a way to do view, I haven't done it again. You can go and check student work one by one. There is an easier way, which is max student work. I haven't done it myself, but it doesn't have, uh, it doesn't open all the all the student work at once. It just let them one by one, in an easier fashion. Fantastic! Uh, Thank you so much. I think I think we've answered mo uh, you've answered most of the questions. Oh, how do you add the lessons to lots of students, or do you have to copy them one by one? I think. You've covered well, I, that already by distributing the page, haven't you, I think? You can distribute the page. We just said the only problem with that is take a few minutes. And sometimes you, you don't want to lose time in the lesson. So most of the time I put in the content library uh, and then just copy and paste it themselves. OK, lovely. Thank you so much. Uh, oh, can you, can you insert a whole PowerPoint? There we are. Yes, you can. So okay. you can any document, any any document, just as you can see here, you've got a PDF or you've got a Word document. You can add any document. You can have Excel or PowerPoint. It will just appear like that, like a little window. And then you can have also the preview of it. So you could have appearing down like that as pages underneath or not as you want. So when you go insert, 
you can insert any document from their file, picture, online video, anything, and it just appears like that. Okay. I don't use I'm... PowerPoint because I think it just doubles the work for most students. <laughs> and can you embed a PowerPoint so you see it as a slideshow, or does it have to be just as the file? Uh, no, I think when I've done use the PowerPoint, which I haven't done many times, I've kind of pasted the slide so you could see the slide appearing underneath. Uh, and then you just click quickly on there directly, and it's open. It's open on PowerPoint. Okay. Mm -hmm. I don't Fantastic. know. If you, I don't think you get a small window like that. Uh, okay. But it's quite easy anyway. Can you can you do screen recording in OneNote or in PowerPoint? Well, you can in PowerPoint, can you? But can you do yeah. screen recording in OneNote? No, at the moment you can only do uh, audio recording. I think I've been told they're looking into that. Uh, my idea, to develop my teaching further, is to use Loom now to do Loom video, for example, for grammar. Uh, five minute win, uh, five minute uh, explanation, and I would just uh, paste it. So, say for example, I'm teaching to have grammar here or vocabulary, or whatever. I would do a long video and just paste the link here, so they could click it or watch it live next to it. So you Amazing! To Amazing! Thank you so much. Um, so so that's all the questions so far I think, or most of the questions so far if you have other content that you'd like to show us that'd be amazing uh, I, I appreciate we're sort of coming up officially to the uh, to the hour mark but if you're happy to carry on Sandra and if people are happy to, to I watch I can show you a bit more lessons so I have shown yeah. you this one um, so for example this one that what I've done uh, so that is the lesson the student uh, haven't done yet so the differentiation I use more or less the same technical ways I put some help and the student would just rub it out uh, I'm just thinking, if you don't have a digital pen, you could still do that, but instead of coloring it, because I am basically, if you can see me using my pen there, I'm just coloring it with my pen. But what you can do is add a box, because you can have shape and things like that. So you could do, you could type and just add box and color the box in and just put it on top like that. It would be exactly the same. Just would be taking a bit longer. So that's the differentiation ID. Um, I would have uh, extension task all the time. What I've done now also is Sometimes the extension is a link to another website, so they can do something else. Uh, I use this is language a lot, uh, and they have direct link, and I use their questions as extension. You've got a writing skill here, and then what I've done is the box is so they all write in the in the box, so I don't look for where their writing is. Um, that is quite a nice one I've just created recently. I can show you that. Um, so you know, as when you ask them to write a um, paragraph, sometimes you ask students to include past tense, perfect tense, uh, imperfect, etc. What I do now is I literally give them the word I want them to include. Um, I just find it works quite well. So I give them word and they must put in their paragraph somehow. Uh, it's more challenging and then it forces them to, to use the correct tense all the time. Um, uh, and then give them vocabulary to learn. Oh, this is quite cool. Um, so in terms of prep, because we call homework prep in our school, it's something I've created uh, over the last four, four years, so it's a new version of it. I record myself reading a typical grade nine text, I would say. Uh, so I'm going to make you listen. Salut, je m'appelle Nadej. Moi, j'adore regarder la télévision le soir. Mon programme préféré, c'est 10%. Etc. So I've got an ID. So there is past tense, future tense, everything in there. And then they have to write the transcript for me. Uh, and then we crack it. Next lesson. And then that is my new thing where I give them a link to, for the student that want to do. Uh, it's not extension, really. It's from extra work after the lesson. Uh, so they've got plenty of French to do there. There's a full episode there. And this is a link to a study somewhere. Um, but that would be a typical lesson on why not. But again, if anybody is doing differently or got any ID, I'm really into ideas because that's the, the only point. Um, well, Heike has asked a great question. Where did you learn all of this? <laughs> did you do like a Microsoft course or did you uh, um, just learn it independently? Yeah, I did uh, watch a lot of YouTube video and I played with it, really. But anything you see there, it's the way I used to teach on books anyway. It's, it's not that different from the way I used to teach before. It's just the digital version of it. So I guess... Uh, it's just my take on teaching digital version. Uh, I think I was quite brave that I went on one well, not straight away without training. Um, but to be honest, once you, you do a lesson and then you're fine. For example, here I'm planning one. So you just start, you know, you just write starter. So I, if I was to plan this one, I don't like when it's a blank page. So I would just go very French. I put some line like that. 
I would change the color because that's making me happy. <laughs> I'll make it bigger. I'll, I, so uh, the one thing is that French will look like that all the time. So you have to change the language so it, uh, it doesn't make it uh, like there is a mistake. Uh, I make it, I've got a bit uh, OCD on that. I make it always look the same. The student like that. So I start like that. And then I just start, I write starter. And then according to the mood, I might do a gap fill or something. I keep that for later. Sometimes I just add the resource first and I build the lesson around it. Or sometimes I know exactly what I want to do and and you go. So it allows me to actually build my lesson. I can do it over a few days and then I can do, or actually at the end, I want to do a writing task and, and just uh, move it over the day and uh, eventually it takes shapes. Quite nice. So I don't have to go in one go. It's, it's less linear than PowerPoint. You can do it linearly and very methodologically, but I like to, to see it taking shape like that. All these lessons that have been created like that. Um, Fantastic. A couple of people are wondering how you get that sort of um, background, the that Jotter type background. Can you explain? Is it like like a template or one that you found yourself? Or you mean the little the square line? Yeah. So I show you again. So you go to view. So up view here. And then you put rule lines. So some people would prefer the these ones. I don't like them because they're very British. I prefer the little square here. So up. And then you can change the color. So if you've got uh, dyslexic student, this one is nice for them. And then you can display it on the screen like that. And you can also write yourself. So I could just uh, write with my own writing. Or I could record anything. I mean, the more creative you are, the more you can go with it. But nice, there's no, uh, there's no ending to it, really. Yeah, it's amazing. Amazing. Mm -hmm. You can put you can put anything on there. The, the, the way it's really, really good is that students really have access to everything on one page. So they can listen to the, the, the recording again. What I do is, so I've got some teacher that teach the lesson, they correct it um, on the content library and then they leave their correction on it. Uh, I find with that that some students tend for, to wait for the teacher to correct and they copy from there. So I don't do that. I do it exactly as I would in class, which is I write it and then I delete everything. So they have to write their own version of it. Um, but I'm just being mean. <laughs> Just to make sure they're working hard. Um, <laughs> but again, there is different different take on it. Um, there's no right or wrong. I think it's just the kids' style there. Um, so, so just to clarify: Have all the students at Wellington got a surface, and do they all have a pen as well? Yes. So all the students now have Surface. So it's either a Surface Pro or the other version of it. Um, it's the one, but they're both in cable device, so they all have digital pen. So uh, some teacher have been asking me before, uh, what about if they forget their surface? Well, they don't because it's like forgetting their head really, because they have to use it every lesson. Uh, what if they don't charge it? Uh, again, they're used to it, so they do charge it. If they forget, well, we've got plugs in the class, so usually there's always somebody with a charger. I never had a problem. Uh, there's always enough plugs. Uh, and if they forget their pen, again, I am not going to be happy. So what I do is I give them um, very old style, give them a pen and paper. And I make them work on paper that time. And I said for next lesson, they have to reproduce only in their one note. So they only forget it once. <laughs> Good trick. <laughs> and I've got about three, three spare pen in my class anyway. But if they keep expecting me to give them, I just make them do it uh, later on. And they will forget it. They will lose them. And it's the same as they forget the real pen, really. It's not big deal. They can type as well, uh, which I don't like. I'd say for French, I'd rather they, they write because uh, the exam they have to write. That's the thing. I didn't want them to be fully uh, typing all the time because I still want them to work on the exam skill. So, um, I know I'm aware that most people won't have digital pen, but so you know, you don't have to. You can just type. Like it would be fine. I could type now. I can say. And and talking talking of typing, can you show us how to do accents uh, using yeah. a surface? So I don't know exactly. Can you see the lower section of my screen at all? Can you see we that? So you can see the one node, but can you see my little windows open at the back? Maybe uh, can. we can see the uh, un jour en question video, and then it says add section, add page, but we can't see anything so, below that. Uh, basically, on the surface, and uh, that would be probably on surface only. You have a kind of like a black line at the bottom where you right click, and you can add a key touchpad, and then I guess you won't see that now. You will not see that at the end. No. No. So you but if you could explain it to us, I'm sure people... So it, it looks very similar. So when you add that, you have a button that appears, you click on it, and it looks very similar from an iPhone uh, keypad. 
So you can just press on E and the accent appear or on A and the accent appear. This is what I mean when you tap on iPhone and you can wait. Right, so essentially you have to launch the keyboard and there you then you then hold your finger down on say the E key and then I've the different an options idea. will come up. Is that right? I've got an idea. I think I know what I'm doing. I'm going to take a picture of my screen. So you will see it on one not now. I'm going to be cheating. So here you go. So I'm gonna copy that quickly. So I'm just gonna add a picture on the one knot that I've just can you see the picture now there? Can you yes. see that? So if I'm putting that very big, there we go. So what you can see, can you see the little keypad there? There. Okay, can you see that? Uh, I can see the taskbar. I can't see a keyboard. Yeah. No, no, the, the taskbar, and you've got the little. Thing oh, I see. There. Yep, yep, yep. So that to add it on the keyboard, uh, on the on you press on the black line here, right click on it. Uh, it won't work now, obviously. And then you written uh, show keep keep. Oh, let me see exactly what it's called. It shows uh, show keyboard button or something like that. Uh, shows, yeah, keyboard button. So when you do that that get added and i can take a second screen so you can see that now okay let me take another picture of my screen that's a bit fitting okay all right ah it doesn't want to wait uh right, because i'm trying to take a picture at the same time as moving my screen so it's not easy but i will do it there we go. All right. So you will see it will look now like uh, exactly like an iPhone. Let me see a picture now. You will see what I mean. Oh, I think it's not going to work. No, it won't. It's not an application. Oh, maybe it does. Yeah, yeah. Right. We we saw we, we quickly saw the keyboard just then. So this is the touch yeah. keyboard. That's what Frank has just pointed out to us in the chat. Yes. And can be used so, with a mouse too. Yeah, here so, you go. You see it now? Yeah, so yeah, that's yeah. Appear on my screen. And what's happened is when I keep pressing on E, the accents appear. Perfect. And so, then... so can you do that? Do that with any key or with that keyboard, or do you have to add um, a keyboard in a certain language in order to, to no, get no, that? No, no. You can see the ENG there. It's the English. Right. So it's just the English Not keyboard, either. but you can yeah. you can choose different accents that yeah. according to the language. Yeah. Exactly. You just press on E, and then you got accent. I don't use the French one because I uh, I tap faster on the English keyboard. That's Perfect. Right. Hopefully no, everyone in the chat has, has understood how that works. That's really useful, Sandra. Thank you. No problem. And if you have students again using Surface, uh, that's the best way because some of some of the students are allowed to use computer for exam. So I would just tell them to use that. Otherwise, they can use the shortcut as they, most people use shortcut to type accents. Uh, I'm not very good with them. That's all. Uh, so I use that. Uh, and then you, as you type, uh, just to remember, if you don't want your work to to be highlighted in red, you have to select, right click, and change the language to French. Because if you take it off, like now I'm doing, you see all the English appearing, right? It. So, I right. Did it one. so I just don't like when he says I'm making it. <laughs> <laughs> That's all. And uh, for the prep, so you can see there, uh, you've got a little window appearing. The first thing I write, with my pen appear on the window, so I can just write prep and tick it, and if you can see quickly, the prep has been done. What that's good. Do you have any more questions? Or... Uh, no, I think everyone's starting to say thank you ever so much. But I, and we are sort of, I don't know if you if there's other things that you that you want to to show us. But I think that we've yeah. Well, Alex has said got to go now. Mind blown, <laughs> which is great. Um, yeah. Is is there anything else that you'd like to show us? So we well, got I time for hours, but I don't want to take <laughs> people's time. So uh, my my take on it is basically that anything you do in class with a, with a normal exercise book, you can redo on one note. Uh, so far, my biggest challenge was back-to-back -back dictation, and I walked away around, around that. Um, if you are good, the reapplication of that on distant teaching is really, really easy. And uh, just to be clear with the student about the voting and how to use the chat box, and now you, you have to rethink your lesson a little bit. Uh, so it would be a biggest challenge for people that are not used to one note and distant teaching. For me, as I said, it was quite easy because the one note was already in place. Um, the only thing is just to make it clear to students they can't interrupt you when you're talking unless you give them permission and to keep questioning them and making them participate in lesson. 
And I find being live with them actually works better than letting them work on their own. Otherwise, some students won't do it. Um, but yeah, basically, that's it. That's wonderful. And, and obviously, OneNote is available on, on lots of different devices, iPads and Chromebooks yeah. and what have you. So, so at the moment, could, if I show you. Um, yeah, could you do similar functionality? Obviously, you wouldn't be able to do the inking. So can you see my iPad now? OK, yeah, yeah. So while I was actually talking to you, I would not for myself, just in case I didn't, I forgot what I had to say. So I did that on OneNote and I was using it on my iPad. So I didn't use my Surface to do that. <laughs> so I've got three screen actually. <laughs> Yeah, that's amazing. So you could use this in a bring your own device context, couldn't you? Yes. Yeah. So uh, I, I use my phone as well. So I've got an iPhone and I've got my Outlook calendar on that. Uh, so I can see my my every meeting I've got. I've got OneNote. I've got everything on it as well. So I can have access to it at any time. And it's synced automatically, by the way. You don't need to press record. It's just automatic. Um, whatever you do on the app. Uh, the one thing I would recommend people is not to be using the one not online and the one not application is to stick with one. Otherwise, it's very confusing because they look slightly similar. So I use one not the app tonight. This is what I've been using. Uh, I never use the online one because it just looks different and I get confused. Fantastic. OK, well, I think uh, if it's OK, we'll uh, we'll wrap it up there. But thank you so yeah. much, Sandra, for all your um, amazing um, oh. The features that you've been showing, I think it's really blown lots of people's um, ideas on how you can use OneNote. Um, I certainly, yeah, me included. I've tried my very best to answer everyone's, uh, to, sorry, to put everyone's questions. But I think someone was asking about if they want to get in touch with you. Presumably, Twitter would be okay if you're. Uh, uh, if people, yes, I'm on yeah? Twitter. I, I use not to use it very much, but I have kind of started to use it a bit more. So. Uh, Sandra Aktash on Twitter and I will uh, reply any question. I'm very happy. And if people have got any idea and on differentiation in particular or extension or, or their own take on it, because people are already using OneNote, uh, I've never seen anybody doing else, uh, anybody else except my own teacher in Wellington doing it. So I'd like to see other take on it and different organization and that would be amazing. Amazing. We've just got one last question, if that's OK. The questions have been amazing tonight. But, um, so Cecilia said, if you record something on a student's page, can you lock it so they can't delete the recording by accident? Uh, I don't think you can lock their own page. Uh, I don't think okay. that would be possible. I haven't done it, but as I say, um, if you, if you, anything you do, you can save it as a backup on your own teacher folder. So I would do that. Uh, okay. I, I had students delete their own lesson. And, they have to learn. I mean, the same thing if they would lose their book or they would just, I don't know, destroy their book for some reason. So there's more backup on that. And anything they do in the cloud is saved anyway. So there, there might be a way to get an old version of it. So, yeah. OK. OK. Well, thank you so much again. Uh, it's been really fascinating. And we had, um, I think, well, last time I checked, uh, nearly 100 people in the room again. Uh, and still an hour in, well over an hour in, we've still got 57 people in. So I think that the, the community has found that really, really useful. And I will try my best to get the, the video up ASAP after we finished, uh, stop, when we press stop recording, and then people will be able to enjoy it afterwards as well. But thank you again so much, Sandra. Helen, did, was there anything you wanted uh, well, to I say? Well, I want to say on behalf of everybody, as always, thank you very much to Joe. And in fact, yes, the numbers have gone down there, but actually when it was the, you know, when you, when you started wrapping up, they were still there. So people thought we were finishing. So just so you know that lots of people stayed. Um, so thank you ever so much to you, Joe. Um, you know, I've said to others as well, it's lovely. It's like watching a watching a television program, a radio program here. Um, and I think you did brilliantly because this is a massive, massive topic. I've start just to talk personally, I have tried it and then stopped over the last four years or so. It is really difficult. This particular situation has driven me into making sure I can do it now or try to do it. Um, and it's people like Joe, like you, Sandra, like Jane, and just to say Jane is going to be doing a session on Tuesday night. You were saying, Sandra, you'd like to see what other people do. Well, yes. she's going to be, it's, you know, you're very much along the right, the same lines. But I can really see how you can just pick up ideas and think, oh, that's a good idea. But it's something where there are hundreds of questions, loads of questions while you're starting to do it. So just picking up on what um, one of the person said there was almost how can we ask follow-up questions? Sandra, you'd be absolutely flooded if we all asked you questions. It's fine, they can tweet um, on but if I, you're, I, if you're right about that. <laughs> and I think the other thing is we could probably think of a way of making it that there's, whether we've got a hashtag or I know that I have set up a Facebook group for 365 users. So, you know, it's something I think we could really think about how we can help each other so that we're not drowning you in loads and loads of questions because there, I, there are a lot. Be, I'm on holiday. Uh, 
I've got work to do, but I, I, the target was to help people tonight and Brilliant. Uh, and and to to basically to try to improve the the, the teaching at the moment for as mm -hmm. many students as possible because it's a big challenge and uh, I've been on one not for months now, so I would be happy to. Oh, it's share. really really generous of you, really generous. No problem. Okay, so thank you ever so much. And thank you to Heike, who's been there in the background and who has, for some reason, the live stream has only just stopped. But um, perhaps I've pressed something, but it's been great to be able to see that you've had 12 people watching there as well. <laughs> so thank you very much to everybody for coming. And I hope to see you all on Tuesday for um, at 8 o'clock to see Jane Basnett talking about Microsoft Teams and, one, and Notebook as well. So is Tuesday the new survey? So Tuesday, oh, it's called, what is it called, Joe? Sorry, remind me, what was the question Tuesday, again? we call it Tilt. Oh, it, tilt Tuesdays. Or Extra Tilt. Or, or Extra Time, I'm oh, sorry, time. Extra Time, sorry, yeah, that's extra right. We, we, like the, we like the alliteration of Tilt Tuesday, but in fact, in the end, we went for Thursday. But yeah, so it's going to be a Tilt Extra Time. So that'll be the third Extra Time one that we've had. Yeah. So uh, yeah, Tilt Extra Time, there we are. Because we're trying to pack, pack in as many people as, as we can. So Absolutely, absolutely. Okay. So thank you so much, Sandra, that's wonderful. And Thank I'll you, stop Mandy. the recording now. <laughs> yeah. Brilliant. So the recording stopped. Oh, that was really, really good. Really, and I think it is, a, you know, almost to be able to see live how you how you do things as well. So yeah, I was going to to do a live planning, but the the time passed quickly. And I guess when I start talking, just no. I think well, I think that people are asking questions as you're going along. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think, and I think to be honest, if you'd be willing to do a sort of part two, that would be brilliant because I know that you've got other things that you could. Well, I I had one to do as well, one of my uh, teacher online, and mm -hmm. she was going to she accept to to be interviewed, but obviously we didn't have time. But uh, oh. she was reluctant to use OneNote in the first place, and now she's uh, totally on it. And uh, it would be nice to to see why why she changed her mind. Yeah. Well, I think I'll look at the you know look at our planning and see how available everybody is. Um, because really, in a way, during the spring break, if people are willing to do that, that would be really, really good. I think it'd be very, very valuable to see more. Could okay. I? <laughs> you know, you have um, you have students who want to learn French, right? And now, of suddenly, it's the first time ever that you are you, you have a class where you can go online. Uh, you have access to the internet. Is there not a chance that you could collaborate with some uh, real French students, so that the uh, that your students not only do exercises on a mud book, but actually are conversing in French with some French natives? It's a bit of a uh, you know totally out of question, and I really waited after the recording to post this question, think, but it's been on my mind. Sadly, from my school, the prime will be always safeguarding, um, just to make sure what they are talking to. I think that would be the biggest challenge um, to make sure they are actually talking. So it will have to be organized with the school, maybe, and to get permission for that. Uh, but it would be a, a good, good, good idea. Uh, but it's always the, the problem of safeguarding now. Uh, that is why we have to record every session we do. And if we give the power to somebody else to do that, I'm not sure if we can actually give, make them contact mm -hmm. with our students. So I guess the most school will have the same problem as well. And so I was going to say it's a safeguarding thing. There are organisations who will ar arrange that. So there is an e-twinning organisation. There's also um, an organisation called Billy, and that's their aim is to make sure that they have this, if you like, safe environment to put people in touch with others. My own experience is that the French have even more stringent rules about mm -hmm. safeguarding, even more than we do. So. Mm -hmm. um, you know, but the, the absolute ideal is to have a French exchange, have somebody that you know, and, you know, that's the way they meet each other. But um, mm -hmm. I think the reality is that they do probably meet each other on, you know, that they can they could make friends, couldn't they, online? But certainly as a school, it's it's not easy. But, yeah, there are these organisations to help, eTwinning and mm -hmm. Billy. So. Thank you. Fantastic. All Thank right. Thank you so much. So shall I close the, the meeting now or are there any other? Uh, we're being asked if there's a Tilt um, Facebook group, uh, sorry, Phil, uh, Tilt Facebook page, but they're, they're, I've just written there that there isn't. I think that I, I post it on all the 
all the main um, Facebook groups. So I think we don't need to, you know, because obviously we're all volunteers here. We're all doing this for free and it's just another thing to do to manage. So I think that uh, people can find out if they're interested. Well, we had 100 people here tonight. So if people want to find out about it, it'll be posted in all the obvious places, but there isn't like a I suppose a central... there is, there's this idea of follow-up though, isn't there? And the reality is a lot of us here are on Twitter hmm. and having a hashtag does at least mean that sometimes you could be for a while following that hashtag. And I found that certainly this whole one note thing I have needed help so much and it's through knowing the accounts of people on on Twitter who will help and that Mike what's his name Mike Thorn uh, Tolson Tolson Mike Tolson and at edu Microsoft or Microsoft edu and they answer almost straight away hmm. so it's really knowing you know obviously we can ask each other as well but it's good if you get to know these accounts where almost it's their job to do this that that's yeah. their 